everybody this is crystal so today i'm going to show you how to make this cowl here it is so windy here i could not take any pictures outside <laughs> that's why all my pictures are taking here taken here um inside but this is what it looks like i think it turned out really nice now i do want to note this is an intermediate pattern so if you are like a really really super beginner you might want to pass on this one of course you're always welcome to give it a try um um, you can put a button up here or a brooch to hold it if you want. My yarn being that I chose being as busy as it is, I opt out of putting a button or a brooch. I thought it would, I think the yarn just was enough, but you can do it either way. So what do you think? I'm not much of a cow person. This will, <laughs> I don't wear them. This will definitely go to my sister. She'll probably claim it. So what do you want? You want to go ahead and get started on it? Let's do it. Okay, so this is what it kind of looks like up close. It is permanently sewed there, so it doesn't come undone. But here's the stitches. It is a very busy, busy yarn. But um, we'll do a quick measurement on it here. Let me unfold the, the top part. So the, <clears throat> the width measure is approximately nine and a half inches or so. And then the length was right about 37 inches before I folded it up course you could use this you know keep going and make a long scarf or something out of the out of the stitch it's actually a really pretty stitch okay for this project i am using premier spun colors it's a 35 um superwash merino 65 acrylic blend and it is a medium weight number four now you don't have to use this yarn any medium weight four yarn will work there's 419 yards per cake, and this is what I have left of my cake. So you're probably going to need about 300 and, uh, if I had to guess, 375 yards to complete this project. Unless you want to make it longer, of course, you'll need more. Um, if you are wanting to use this, the color that I chose is called Poppy. And then I'm going to be using a size J, which is a 6 millimeter crochet hook. Okay, this stitch isn't, isn't hard to do. Now it's done in a multiple of three plus two, in case you want to make yours wider or not as wide as mine. But follow along with me. I started out with a chain of 44. Okay, so once you get your chain of 44 done, what we're going to do is we're going to do a double crochet in the sixth stitch from the hook. So we're going to count. Remember, we don't count this one that's on our hook. And in the sixth stitch, we're going to do a double crochet. Like that. Now we're going to start the repeat. We're going to chain three. Repeat of the row. One, two, three. And we're going to work a cluster around this double crochet. So what we're going to do is yarn over, go around the post of the double crochet, and draw up a loop. Then we're going to yarn over and go through the first two loops on our hook. We want to do that three times. So that was one. Again, yarn over, go around the post, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two loops. That's two times. One more time, yarn over, go around the post, draw up a loop. Go through the first two so that's three times now we're going to skip two stitches skip skip yarn over and go into the next stitch so we skipped two and we yarn over and we're going into the next stitch and drawing up a loop we're going to yarn over and go through the first two loops we'll have five loops that remain yarn over and go through all five loops like that and then we're going to do a chain three one two three and do the same thing again we're working around this double crochet here or part of a double crochet that we did and what we want to do again we yarn over drop a loop go through the first two loops we want to do that three times around that post so that was one two
three. Then we're going to skip two stitches. The first row is the hardest. It's once you get past this, it's easy. One, two, skip two. So we're going to yarn over after we skip two and go into the next one. Draw up the loop. Yarn over and go through the first two loops. Five loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all five loops like that. Again, we start over. We chain three. One, two, three. Now we're working around the post of this partial double crochet right here. So we yarn over and we go around the post of it. Draw up a loop. Yarn over. Go through the first two loops. So we want to do that three times. That was one. Yarn over goes through the first two. That's two times. One more time. Yarn over. Go through the first two. Now we're going to skip two stitches again. Skip, skip. And in the next one, we yarn over, go into it, and draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two. And you got five loops on your hook. Yarn over and go through all five loops. Chain three and do it again. That's what it's kind of looking like. The puffs are kind of slanted on their sides. Remember, we always work around this. It's part of the cluster, but it's the double crochet that's off by itself. So again, we need to yarn over, go around the post of that stitch, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first loop, or first two loops, we need to do that three times. That was one, two, three. Then we skip two stitches, skip, skip, and in the next one, we're going to yarn over, go into it, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two. And then you have five loops that remain. Yarn over and go through all five loops like that. And that completes the cluster. So we do it again. We chain three. And then we do our cluster, cluster around this double crochet here. three times now we are going to skip two chains skip skip and in the next one we yarn over go into it draw up a loop yarn over and go through the first two and yarn over and go through the remaining five again chain three I'm going to show you one more time working around this in this space right here around the post of that double crochet We need to do that three times. That was one, two, three. Skip two chains. I'm gonna make sure you look and you're skipping two because sometimes you have to see where your double's at. Skip, skip, and in the next one, yarn over, go into it, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two. And then the remaining five. And then we chain three and do it again. So we're going to repeat this until we get to the last two chains of our row. All right, I'm coming to the end and I have two stitches that remain. I just did a cluster there. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and chain three. And I'm going to go ahead and do my cluster around this double crochet here like normal. Now instead of skipping two stitches like we would normally, we just skip one and go into the last stitch and draw up a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two loops and then complete our cluster like that. Now you'll have a total of 13 of these clusters. I'll, I did mine a little bit smaller just to show you how, but you'll have a total of 13. Now what we're going to do is do a chain of three and turn our work. Now row two is the repeat row. Now it might be a little tricky. 
at times. You might feel it's a little tricky to get to get the hang of the stitch, but you'll get it. Don't worry. It's not it's not hard. So what we're going to do is we are going to do a double crochet into this first chain three space. And then we will start our repeat of the row by chaining three. Make sure you chain three after that double crochet. And now we're going to work around this double crochet, the post of it, and do our cluster. Like that. Okay, like that. Now what we're going to do is jump over to this next chain three space. We're going to yarn over and go through the space and draw up a loop. Yarn over and go through the first two. And you'll have five that remain. Yarn over and go through all five. Just like that. And then we're going to chain three again. And then we'll repeat. So we do our cluster right here over this last portion of our last cluster. This double crochet here. So we go right around the post of it and we work our... three like that and then we jump over to the next chain three space we yarn over go through the space draw up a loop yarn over and go through the first two and then the remaining five there's our next cluster again we chain three and we're going to work our cluster right here around the post of this half part of the end of the cluster this double crochet here By working it around that post, that's what makes our cluster slant like that. So there's three. Jump to the next chain three space. Yarn over. Go through the space. Draw up a loop. Yarn over. Go through the first two. And yarn over and go the remaining five again. And that's what we're going to repeat until we get to the end of the row. One, two, three. Chain three. Working around this double crochet here. We start to work our cluster. So there's one, two, three. Jump over here to the next chain three space. Yarn over, go through the space, draw up a loop. Yarn over, go through the first two, and then the remaining five. Again, chain three. Working around this double crochet there. And then we work our cluster again. So I'm going to repeat this pattern until I get to the end of the row. Jump over to the next chain three space, yarn over, go through the space, drop a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, and then the remaining five, chain three, and do it again until you get to the end. All right, I'm coming to the end. Now the end is where you just have to pay a little bit more attention to where you end because it looks a little funny when you end it. So I did my three cr clusters around that double crochet and I have this chain space here left on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and yarn over and do my cluster like normal. Go through the space, drop a loop, yarn over and go through the first two, and then yarn over and go through the remaining five. Now that is not the end. We need to do it one more time. It, would appear that that would be the end of the row because that's the last chain space but really the end is down here so what we'll have to do is chain three and do the cluster around this double crochet here that we just did and we end it by going into the top of the chain last chain space from the previous row. So we yarn over, go into the top of that last chain space, draw up a loop, yarn over, go through the first two, and yarn over and go through the remaining five. So that's how you end it. And you'll have 13 clusters again. Now it does, like I said, it does get a little confusing at the ends, and but it's once you get the hang of it, you'll fly through. Let's do it again. So now it's just a repeat of row two, what we just did. So we'll start off by chaining three again. And you turn your work. Now we want to double crochet into the first chain three space. And remember to chain three again. And that starts our repeat of the row. Now we work around that double crochet doing our first cluster. Chain 
and then we jump over here to the next chain space we yarn over go through the space draw up a loop yarn over go through the first two and yarn over through the remaining five and that's our first cluster then we do it again we chain three and we're working around this post here go ahead and do our cluster jump over here to the next chain space we yarn over go through the chain space draw up a loop yarn over go through the first two and then yarn over and go through the remaining five again there's our second cluster start over by chaining three working around this stitch here do our cluster so we're just repeating what we did on the previous row jump over here to the next chain three space yarn over go through it drop loop yarn over go through the first two and the remaining five and then we start again we chain three and work our cluster here now we're going to do that until we get to the end and i'm going to meet back up with you at the end of the row all right i'm coming to the end now i got my partial cluster done and i have this chain three space here on the end again you would think this would be the end it is not so i got my partial cluster so what i want to do to finish it out is i yarn over i go into this last chain three space here on the end and draw up a loop and yarn over and go through the first two and the remaining five now we have to do one more cluster so we chain three and we work around this double crochet here and we do our cluster one two three now we end it by doing the last portion into the top of the chain three down here from the previous row it's down here it's not this chain three that we just went through it's down you got to drop down so you yarn over and go into the top of that chain three way down here it's the turning chain three draw up a loop yarn over go through the first two and then the remaining five and that's how the row ends and you'll have 13 clusters again now like i said it is a little bit uh hard to see with them chain three spaces all coming together at the end but remember you always end with your last uh cluster part goes into the top of your turning turning chain from the previous row and then we just repeat we chain three turn and start again that's it don't be intimidated by the stitch it gets real easy once you keep doing it it'll become really really easy and you'll figure out remember this chain right here is not the, the last chain that you go through you end it in the turning chain down here that's the only part that i kind of found difficult to get around but after i did it a few times it was really easy so you want to repeat this until you get your piece as long as you want it to be all right <clears throat> i have done a total of 36 rows or you want to get a length well mine's an approximately mm, 37 inches long okay now we're gonna fold it how um after your last row there just went ahead and tie it off there at the end okay so this is what we do to fold it now we just lay it out like this <clears throat> all laid out and fold one side over kind of like this now we'll have like a the top will flip a little bit like this takes a little bit of fiddling <clears throat> excuse me and fiddle with it for a little bit and then your other side comes down and it lays across like this see that do that again so that's like this pop folds down and then you take your other side this is the flat side of it but it cocks at an angle and it'll go along this long side so you'll have your point right here in front and then you can do that now you could take this cowl and leave it as is after you sew in all your tails of course and you can pin it you could put a button on here you can use a brush or you can permanently sew it with just a yarn needle 
um, this side together and then this together and that way it always holds shape and it never comes undone and then you can just slip it over your head um, that's kind of like what that's what I like to do with cows you don't have to do that like I said if you want it to be able to wear it other ways like just maybe like a just wrapped around your neck once to make it like a really really short scarf or something you wouldn't want to sew it up but if you want it to be like a permanent cow where it always always is the shape that you want it and you can just you know put it right over your head and go it's a good idea to sew it so you take your yarn needle and just a piece of yarn and well, that's what I do and just sew it up so I sew it up along this side here here's the side that has the chains from the barrier last row we did I kind of left that one on top you don't have to you can leave it anywhere you want but we just want to neatly sew it along this side and then you'll want to neatly sew it along this long side also that way it won't come undone so as neatly as you can you just take your yarn needle and go through the pieces I'm gonna do a back and forth motion. I'm not gonna go over like a whip stitch. Just grabbing a stitch or so. You don't wanna make your sewing real noticeable. So maybe if you want. You could just put a few stitches here, clip off, put a few stitches here, clip off, and then in the corner, clip off, a few stitches here, and a few stitches here. I think I'm just going to go ahead and sew all the way down, all the way down here, and then all the way up here. Remember, we're just sewing these two pieces together. That way, my cowl is permanently shaped the way it's supposed to be, because sometimes putting cows on her, not that fun. I'm getting them trying to get them to look right can be difficult <clears throat> so I am going to continue across here so on my piece up and there we go see now it's not gonna come undone whenever you put it on so just continue down sewing here down to the point and then back up this side sewing the two pieces together all right, once you get it all sewed up, that's it. That's all there is to it. Now remember, if you left yours unsewed, that's fine. You're just gonna need some type of a uh, little pin or brochure to hold it shut if you for when you wanna wear it like this. But that's all, that's it. I think it turned out pretty cool. It is a really busy yarn. So I'm gonna not put a button or anything on mine. I think that it doesn't need anything since the yarn is so busy. But I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. Please don't forget to uh, give it a big thumbs up. If you enjoy, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my other videos. And if you look over there on the right-hand side of the screen, I'm going to put a playlist of all my other cowls and scarves and stuff. In case you want to take a look there, maybe you'll find something else that you like and want to make. So until next time, have a good day.